Reviewing for the Unit 7 and 8 exam, here are the solutions. Always best, right, to do it first, to do your best, then look at the video to see how it can support you. All right, the graph shown to the right is the derivative of a function. You're given a point and use that to find something else on the function, in this case 8. This is an integration question, a starting value one. So the starting value that you're given is 2. And then we're going to integrate from 0 up to what I'm looking for. In this case, I'm looking for 8 of the derivative. So there's the start. Starting value question, we integrate from 0 up to what we're looking for of the derivative here. So I need to go from 0 to 8 of this. And so how do I integrate off a graph is I find the area. So first I see, in fact, I'm going to go all the way across to 8. So first... I see this rectangle. So the area of that rectangle is 2 by 8. I can do that. So that 2 is from that, so 16. And then the other one on top, I think, is a triangle. And then the base and the height of that. So it goes from 5 to, uh, five to 8, that's 3. And then the height goes from 2 to 5, that's also 3. All right. 3, 3, and 3, right? 5 to 8 is 3. 2 to 5 is 3. I got this. All right. So we can put this together and get the answer. What is that? 27.5, and you have your answer. Okay. Number 2. F and G be inverse functions of each other. And then it gives you a bunch of information. So we know that the keyword for inverses is reciprocal. Sometimes if you have a chart, it can help you. So for f, 2, 3. For g, it's 3, 2. And these are reciprocals. So the derivative at 2 is the same for the derivative at 3 in terms of reciprocal. So do I know the derivative at 2? Nope. So I don't know this one. Next one. 0, 4 is the same as 4, 0 on G. So the derivative at 0 and the derivative of 4 are reciprocal. So the derivative of 0 is negative 5. So this is negative 1 over 5. Next one, 0. Well, those are the only, right, two points given. So the only thing I could find is the derivative at 3 and the derivative at 4 for G. So this one also is not available in terms of the information that's given. So sometimes a chart can help you figure this out. Number three, this is a fundamental theorem of calculus question. Derivative and integration, they undo each other. This is a substitution question. So where there's a t, I'm going to substitute in x. And then the derivative of x would create a hook if there was something there at the end. And that's it. Number, there's no number on here. This should really say number four. Number four, or 3A, or 3B, is another, or another three. The graph below shows a well drilling company, holds or us, and it gives the instantaneous rate at a given depth. This is the rate the customers are charged. So, if I want to, this is write a complete sentence telling what point A represents. So that's right here. So we need to include both axes. So first of all, what's the depth at point A? It's 50. So add a depth of 50 feet. The rate to um, so the depth of 50 feet. The rate is what is it? 100 and oh, wait a second. The x coordinate. Duh. So at a depth of 160 feet. Sorry. So at a depth of 160 feet, the rate is uh, $50 per foot. Simple. Uh, use the figure below and table above to approximate using a right Riemann sum from 20 to 80. All right, so to do that, and I have three rectangles, so I need to know 
So it's going to be top, subtract, bottom, divided by 3. So that's 60 divided by 3. So each rectangle is going to be a width of 20. And we're starting at 20. So the first one goes from 20 to 40, because it's a width of 20. And it's a right Riemann sum. So what's on the right? We're going to use a height of 10. The next one goes from 40 to 60, and the right one there is 13. And uh, one more, 60 to 80, and the right Riemann sum there is 20. So if I add this up, what is that? 30, 43, and then double that. So it's 860. Right? Yeah. Now write a complete sentence to understand what this meant. So from 20 to, to 80. So from depths. Uh, 20 feet to 80 feet, the cost, now it's no longer a rate, it's actually the cost, will be $860. So it's no longer dollars per foot, now it's just what the unit is, which is in dollars. All right. Number four, if negative two, negative seven is a point on f at x, then what is the inverse at negative seven? What's the derivative? This should really have the derivative sign at negative seven. All right, so first I'm going to take the derivative. That's two x plus five. Then I'm going to plug in negative two. So two times negative two is negative four plus 5 is 1. So then that gives me the answer I'm looking for. So the reciprocal of 1 is still 1 because 1 over 1 is 1 over 1 and that's the answer I'm looking for. So this answer would be reciprocal in terms of what I'm looking for. All right, derivative question. Can you take the derivative here? This is the product rule. So it's the first times the derivative of the second. So what I see goes in the denominator. The derivative of what I see is the numerator. Plus the second times the derivative of the first. And the rule for e to the x is copy it. Number six, again, you should obviously do these questions first and then follow the video. What's the derivative here? Copy 4e to the negative x squared. And then the hook is the exponent. And the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. Number seven, this is an integration question, so I need to know where the hook comes from. So the hook comes from the denominator. So the derivative of the denominator is e to the x plus one. That's exactly what this numerator is. So the hook matches exactly. I don't need a fraction in front. So this is a logarithm, and what you see in the denominator goes inside the logarithm, plus c. All right, number eight, again, an integration question. I need to know where the hook comes from again. That's the exponent. So the derivative of the exponent is negative 3x squared. Then I copy the rest. That's the hook that should be there. And then I compare what it was over what it becomes. So that's negative 4 thirds. Remember to circle the hook. So the hook, when you integrate, is not a part of my final answer. So make sure you circle it. It goes away. And my answer starts with negative 4 thirds. And then the rule for e is you copy it. And then plus c. Number nine, if f at x equals this, find this derivative. So this is going to be the quotient rule. So the quotient rule is um, the bottom times the derivative of the top. So the derivative of 2 to the x is copy it, but it needs a friend law on 2, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, and then the bottom squared. And then we take that answer and plug 1 in everywhere you see. So 1 times 2 to the 1 is 2. Plug in 1, and that's minus 2. Plug in 1, it's divided by 1. And that's a good answer there if you want. Uh, you could also write the 2 as an exponent here. So it becomes 2 squared would be ln 4, take away 2. That could be also an answer. 
That's being a little fancy, but that's a good final answer. Number 10. Find the equation of the line tangent to this at this point. So if I want to find the equation of a tangent line, there are three uh, values I need to know. So I need to know x, y, and the slope. So in this question, the uh, point gives you that, x and, and y. Find the slope, we need to take the derivative. This is going to be again the product rule. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 1. I don't need it. And then plug in, uh, plug in 1 into here. So 1 times 1 over 1 is 1. Ln 1 is 0. So when I plug in 1 here, this is just 0. So it just leaves me with 1. So the equation would be 1, the slope, x minus 1 plus 0. Or you could just write down x minus 1. That's the tangent line. Turn the page. Number, number 11. All right. So for f at x to equal this, can you answer these questions? Big question on the exam is a question that looks like this. has lots of parts to it. First step is the domain. Are there any restrictions for x? Is there anything x can't be? Or can you put in any number for 2x and e to the x? The answer is yes. Any number works. So it's all real numbers. Intervals of increasing and decreasing maximum and minimum values. That's all the first derivative. So I'm going to do that right here. So if you take the derivative, you could do it below 2. It's the product rule. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first and make it equal to 0. And then we're going to factor. So both of these terms have a 2 and e to the x and factor that out. And what I'm left with is x plus 1 when you factor that out. And so 2 e to the x can never equal 0. No matter what number you put in for x, it will always be a positive value. But the second one, when I solve it, x can equal negative 1 to solve it. So we only have one number on this number line. That's at negative 1. Next, into the derivative here, if I plug in a negative number, negative 2, I have a positive value. Remember, this is always positive. So a negative times a, negative 2 plus 1 is negative. So a negative, I mean a positive times a negative. So again, so if I plug in negative 2, the exponential is always positive. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative. So when you multiply it together, it's a negative answer. If you plug in positive 2 or 0, you get a positive times a positive, which is positive. Remember, e to the 0 is 1. So at negative 1, first of all, we know where it's increasing from negative 1 to infinity. And we know where it's decreasing, which is negative infinity to negative 1. The maximum value is when, well, in fact, there's none, right? There's no maximum value. We only have a minimum value at negative 1. Now, if it asks for the minimum value, I actually have to plug that in. So where there's an x, plug in negative 1. So that answer is negative 2 over e. That's the minimum value. You could have also just plugged in this as your minimum value, and that would have been OK. So that's your minimum value. There is no maximum value. There's only a minimum. Uh, the second derivative. So let's do that right here. So again, look at the first derivative. Again, this is going to be the product rule. We just did this one, 2x. So we're just going to do that again. So the first times the root of the second plus the second times the root of the first. And then the second, 2e to the x, is just 2e to the x. So we have the product rule. And then the derivative of 2e to the x is that. Equal to 0. Factor out what they have in common. In fact, we're going to combine like terms first. So e to the x, so that's 1 plus 2, that's 3. Now factor out e to the x. And I have 2x plus 3. And then if I solve this, that's negative 3 over 2. e to the x will never be 0. So that's the number, the critical number for the second derivative. And then into here, let's say I plug in negative 5. That's a negative times a positive. Or if I plug in positive 5, that's a positive times a positive. So where is it concave up from negative 3 over 2 to infinity? Uh, where is it concave down from negative infinity 
to uh, negative 3 over 2. And the x value of the point of inflection where it changes concavity is negative 3 over 2. And if we can do this on the exam, right, that's a lot of points right there, right? That's some good calculus that you can do. All right, focus in. Number 12, I'm going to integrate this. So how do I integrate this? It's a fraction. The derivative of the bottom matches the top. It's a logarithm. And you write only the denominator. And then I'm evaluating from 3 minus e up to 3. So I have another step where I have to plug in the top value, subtract, plug in the bottom value, and you have your answer. You could be fancy and write this as dividing if you wanted to. But remember, plug in here. When you plug it in, the second 3 plus 1 is 4. Take away e. That's where it comes from. All right, number 13. Average value is a calculus question. That's an integration question. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2. And we integrate this function, which is e to the 2x minus 2. And then divide by the difference of the bounds. Now, I find this easier. Know that there's a fraction here, 1 half. So I'm going to write this as 1 half. And then I'm going to integrate this. So the hook for 2x is 2, so it needs a 1 half in front. So it's 1 half e to the 2x. The antiderivative of negative 2 is just negative 2x. And again, I'm evaluating it from 0 to 2. I can just put 1 half in front and first plug in 2. So that's 1 half e to the 4 minus 4. Subtract. Plug in 0 e to the 0 is 1. That's just 1 half minus 0, which is 1 half. And you have your answer. You don't have to simplify. 14. I want you to take the derivative of this. I think we're missing a letter here. I'm going to put it right here. I think there's an x there. x squared. I don't know why it didn't print out. So let's put an x right there. So the derivative is going to be the quotient rule again, right? Which is the bottom times that. Now what you see goes in the denominator, and the derivative of that, the hook, is in the numerator, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, and then the bottom squared. Do you know the quotient rule? You don't have to simplify it. 15, this will be a good one for you. So I want to find the derivative here, but we have to do it implicitly. So every time you take the derivative with y involved, it needs a y prime. Uh, this is the product rule. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now the derivative of y is 1, but it needs a y prime. The derivative of ln y, what you see, goes in the denominator. The derivative of one, y would be 1, but it needs a y prime. And the derivative of x is 1. If it has a y prime, we need to bring it together. So we're going to subtract y prime over y to bring it to the left. And we're going to subtract uh, y e to the x. So we can rearrange it. Factor out a y prime. That's e to the x minus 1 over y. We don't have to make it look pretty. And then divide, and you have your answer. Awesome. Again, try your best first. All right, last page. This is really one. Let's try it first and then watch the video to see if you did it correctly. All right, we have a fraction. What's the derivative of the bottom? That's negative 12x. That's going to change it. What was it before and what did it become? So it was a 2. It became negative 12. You can leave it as that. And then it's ln and then just the denominator. So the numerator goes away. So make sure you don't write down the whole fraction inside. Number uh, 17, we need to write this friendly. So calculus friendly would be 1 minus 4x squared to the negative 1 half. Now we don't have a fraction. This is not a logarithm. The derivative, the hook, is uh, negative 8x. And what it was, was a 1, and what it became is negative 8. So it's 1 over negative 8. Now the hook is not a part of the answer. So we have negative 1 over 8. We add 1 to the exponent, so negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. Instead of dividing, we multiply times the reciprocal, and then plus c, and it's done. Number 20, a diffy q. We're going to separate. We're going to divide by y. 
and multiply by dx. We're going to integrate both sides. 1 over y is ln y. This is x cubed over 3. To get y by itself, we write this as an exponential. We can rewrite this with two e's to separate the constant. And to remove the absolute value bars would be plus or minus e to the c times e to the x cubed over 3. Then we can do a substitution and just make it a simpler constant for this one that's more complicated. And we don't have a point, right? So it's all done there. Done. If we did have one at this step, we'd plug it in to see what c equals. This one has a point. So again, we're going to separate the variables and plug in the point. So we're going to multiply by 2y. Uh, we're going to multiply by dx, and then we're going to integrate both sides. On the left, you have y squared. Here, the hook should be 2x. So what it was over what it becomes, that's 1 half, and then the hook goes away, and copy, plus c. At this step, we could plug in a point if we want. So you can plug in 0 for x and 1 for y to solve for c. So e to the 0 is just 1, so that's 1 half, so it's 1 take away a half, that's a half. So that's what c equals. So I come back here, I square root, I got to be aware that the y coordinate's positive. So that means it's the positive part of the square root, not the negative in front. And then it's 1 half e to the x squared plus 1 half. Number 22, evaluating some limits here. So to evaluate this limit, first we need to know if it's indeterminate. So if we evaluate at 0, I get 0. e to the 0 is 1, so 2 take away 2. It's 0 over 0. That is indeterminate. So we need to take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2 is 0, and negative 2 e to the x is copy it. Again, if I plug in 0, I get 0, but e to the x is actually 1. It's actually 0 divided by negative 2. That's not indeterminate. The answer is 0. Here, the limit as x approaches infinity. We have the square root of x and ln x. Both of these are going to infinity. Both of these, the right end goes up. So we're going to do L'Hopital's rule. I'm not sure which one increases faster. So the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, and then we're going to rearrange it and see what happens. So this is going to go in the numerator. x to the negative 1 half, that's going to go in the denominator with the 2. So that's in the denominator. These now both increase again, but now I can clearly see the top increases faster than the bottom. So the answer here is infinity, or you could write down it doesn't exist. All right, number 24. What's the limit as x approaches 0? That's 0 divided by negative 4. That's not indeterminate. That answer is 0. Number 25. If I plug in 0, the integration from 0 to 0, that area is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0. So this one is a L'Hopital rule question where we take the derivative. Now the derivative and integration cross out, and I just plug in. It's a substitution question. It's the fundamental theorem of calculus question. So I just plug in with no hook. So copy the whole thing, but put in x for there. And then the derivative of 3x is 3. Now plug in 0. And you get negative 1 to the 10, that's 1. And then 3, that's 3, and it's 1 third. Oh, you see that fly? That's it. I'm done. The fly is flying. Mr. G Math over and out. Hope that helped. Till next time.